you go over. So first of all, thank you for joining me. We've got one person there, so make sure to comment. Um, I can't see who you are, so if you let me know who you are, that'd be really cool. Um, and yeah, talk throughout, ask me lots of questions. Um, hopefully it goes both ways with a um, bit of communication. And hopefully um, we can get a bit of good discussion going because um, it's pretty exciting in the tuna. So first of all, I'm gonna go over a bit of the, the gear I'm, I've got. And from there, we'll, we'll rig some, some stuff up. I've already done a lot of the um, the, the shock leader and the leader and the FG knots because I didn't want to waste your time with having like, you just watch me tie an FG knot for a minute. That's a bit boring. Um, you hearing me okay? If you're hearing me okay, try and give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Hopefully it's all working well. This is the first time I've done it, but I'm gonna grab a rod. Alrighty, so I got, this is a Hen 650 SSM. I picked them up the other day from Anaconda. I got two of them for 33 bucks each because they stuffed up on the website. <laughs> so they lost my game. And I've got that matched up on just the, the Jarvis Walker, Jarvis Walker Tough Tip. And that's a 10 to 15 kilo. So I love using this rod for the tuner on the kayak. Um, it's got a little bit of, bit of flex in the tip for um, when they're close by, when they're circling, and you've got to drag them up out of it. And um, this has landed a couple tuner on it, so it goes well. So this, I've already got 40 pound braid on there, mainline. And then I've got 24 kilo shock leader mono. And I'm gonna just, so this one's gonna be for a soft plastic. So I'm going to put on a swivel and run some 50 pound fluorocarbon leader down to a jig head. And um, for, for the summer bluefin tuna, we, especially on the summer run, they're feeding on a lot of little white bait. So I tend to find that small little white soft plastics tend to go really well. And got a couple other stuff I like to use. And I'll go over them soon. So the trusty braid scissors, they cut everything. Oh, we don't want to move that down the tip. And so I'll put on a swivel. So these are the mustard swivels. Oh, my finger's covering it there. Mustard swivels. All right, so I've got, these are 47 kilo or 105 pounds. Um, and I like running heavier swivels than the line either side of it, just because the swivels are a little bit unpredictable with um, the braking strain compared to the line. So I'll chuck this on. So the swivel will help with um, the circles the tuna do. It won't help a whole lot, <laughs> but it will help a little bit. So I'm just going to run a a uni knot that's what i run for most of my knots i just run uni knots through one two three and four a little bit of spit to lubricate the line so i don't get any mono burn in the knot there just coming out all right on the live stream not too glitchy let me know if it is Great to have some feedback, and um, I'll see what I can do. All right, so there's my swivel tied on. Now we go to the leader. So I've got FC Rock 50 pound fluorocarbon leader, and I really, I usually use Sega leader, fluorocarbon leader, and in other seasons I've used 40 pound. I'm upping to 50 pound this season, just because I got pretty well outclassed by a, a good fish last season and I don't want a repeat of that. So we've gone the 50 pound, we've gone the FC rock because the, the seagull is really hard to get a hold of. Um, it's quite a supple, a, a supple fluorocarbon so it's really nice if you can get a hold of it because it's really nice for tying knots. But if you can't get a hold of it, I'll see if there's any comments. Um, if you can't get a hold of it, then I think um, I think this is a pretty good alternative, a pretty good backup. So we're going to do uni knot again. One, two, three, four. 
bit more lubrication, pull it tight, and there we go. Let me just tie it on. Now my leader length, I'll sort of run it by being pretty practical. Oh, hey, really? Have I had a swivel fail? Um, I, I haven't had a swivel fail on the line, but just the other day I had swivels on sinkers fail me. Um, they were a little bit rusted, and I think they used low-quality swivels in the sinkers, and so my sinkers were sort of just... I'd pull them out of the water, and, and they'd, had the, um, they'd be on the, sw the swivel attaching to a clip in Western Port, and they were just dropping off. So I haven't had a good quality swivel like this fail on me, um, but I also don't use rusted ones on these. I was scraping the bottom of the barrel with um, the swivels I was using the other day, and they were a bit rusted. So that's probably why. But like I said before, I like to use heavier swivels than the line class I'm using, um, just because I don't fully trust them. All right, so there's my leader length. I've done that according to making sure that it's when I've got the line wound up to about where the swivel is going to just about reach the tip, I've got enough line that I'm not going to high stick around the tuna and can still pull them up. Um, and yeah, if you go too long, you won't be able to cast it out. And it's nice to be able to cast the line out on the kayak, um, especially on a paddle kayak, because you can't sort of feed it out while you're keeping yourself moving. So onto the jig heads now. These are just TT, what are they called? Yeah, the TT series jig heads. I've got half ounce here, and they're 50, 50 half ounce. And these are what we find, well, I find anyway, tend to be really good and tend to be the go to for the tuna. Um, the half ounce, it seems like you need a little bit more weight to keep, keep the um, plastic down below the surface to tempt them. Um, with plastics anyway, um, stick bait seems to be a different issue. Um, but yeah, and the 5 seems to be plenty big enough. And then another uni knot, one, two, three, four. Bit of saliva there. And cut off the tag. And there we go, that's ready to go. I won't put the plastic on tonight because plastics have a tendency of drying out or melting or something like that. And it's, I'm not going fishing for a couple of days yet, but I'll go through some of the plastics I plan to use. I picked up a few the other day. So this is, these ones look really nice. These are actually a gulp, they're a five inch. And they're a, they're the jerk shad and they're a glow white. And they do glow quite a bit, but I really love how white they are. Because um, quite a lot of the gulps, I'll get another pack, for example, this is a 7 inch, this is a pearl white. And you see it's really not very white, it's quite yellow. Um, but these ones are really nice and white. So I like the look of these. I wasn't able to get my favourite plastic, which is the Z-Man um, 5 inch. So these are the Z-Man Jerk inch 7 inch. But my favourite is the 5 inch, a little bit smaller. So I've got plenty of 7 inch, and they, they, should do, they can still work quite well. Um, but yeah, so I've got a couple options there. I've also got Z-Man 3.75 inch. Um, so they're smaller again. Um, and the, the white bait they're feeding on are quite small. They're about this size. Um, but you sort of got to find a balance between having a big enough bait to draw them into the bait and having a small enough bait to match the hatch. I've also got, these are the um, those are Sluggos. And they're 6.5 inch. I like those because they're a nice like low profile. I'll get a couple out maybe a little bit later if anyone wants me to show those. Um, so they're 6.5 inch and I can also cut them down to be, to be smaller if I want. So there's that line rigged up. So we'll wind that up and put that away and we'll get on to rigging up another one. So this is another 650 SSM. As I said before, I got two of them for 33 bucks each from Anaconda because they mucked up their prices. So, and this is on a this is one of my favourite rods actually. This is a Nexave 
um, 6 to 10 kilo Shimano Nexave. And I've had this for oh, ages, years, years. And it's done really well. It's, it's caught tuna. Um, 6 to 10 kilo is fine to catch the majority of tuna out there, but it, it did get outclassed when I had a bigger model. Um, so this one I'm gonna, I've got a FG knot. I'll see if I can show you see that FG knot there. Let me know if you can see that all right. Against my forehead you can a bit. And I'm gonna run a stick bait. And this stick bait, I love this stick bait. I picked up two more of them the other day because the other one I used from last year, the hooks have rusted out on it and I'll eventually replace the hooks. But for now I just brought another two because they're in stock. But that's it there. How cool is that? It's just a really low profile pencil stick bait, sinking stick bait. And um, I, I managed to catch a tuna. I lost the tuna and caught a kingfish on it all in the same day last year. And they wouldn't touch anything else. So I've gotten a few more of them. So they're the Yaka. Oh man, it's shining a bit, isn't it? They're a Yaka Mento sub minnow. And that's a 13 centimeter, 25 gram. So I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, but that's it there. So awesome stick bait, highly recommend it, having it in your arsenal. And again, I'm just going to go with a uni knot. So let me know if you've got any, any favourite go-to lures. One, two, three, four. Or any lure you reckon might work on the tuna this season. It's always a bit of theorising what's going to work. You know, you work off what worked last year. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the best option this year. They can change around a little bit, change their minds, be a bit picky. But there we go. That's ready to go. So I'll wind this up. Connect it there. And wind that one up. And there's the second rod rigged up. Onto the third rod. This again, another, you're going to get sick of me saying it, another Pen SSM 650. This is actually my older one. I did not buy this one the other day. I've had this one for about four years and it's held up fine. And the hold up four years on a kayak, and this kayak sits really low to the water, so the reels are only about maybe 15, 20 centimetres off the water, and with heaps of salt and abuse, it's still going fine, and it catches me heaps of fish. I reckon I've caught more fish on this reel than any other reel. So that's why when I saw them for 33 bucks, I thought, I can't pass that up. So this again has 40 pound braid and 24 kilo shock leader, and it's on this is an interesting rod. I'm not sure what exact brand it is, but it is called a a jig smasher, and it's a 24 kilo rod. This is the heaviest rod I have, and I actually brought this one off my brother for 50 bucks, so that was a bargain too. Um, it had a, a busted tip on the end um, last guide there, but I've replaced that. It only cost me a couple of dollars to replace, and she's as good as new. Now this rod, I really like the look of it. I'm hoping it goes really well. Oh, we got another person watching. Welcome to the, welcome to the live stream. If you're enjoying it, make sure to give me a thumbs up. You can definitely ask more questions, and hopefully I haven't missed anyone's questions because the comments only pop up for a minute. If I have, just yell at me. All right, there we go. That shock leader. I like running a bit of shock leader to rods that are going to have jig heads just because the hooks on those aren't as robust as on the stick baits. Oh, there we go, we got a like. Good, good. All right. Thank you for the like. Um, and so, yeah, I like running the little bit of, it's got a bit of give. I've got about, I've probably got about 20 meters of shock leader, so I've been pretty generous with it. It also, it's nice to fill up the end of the spool if I haven't quite filled it up with the braid as well. So again to that swivel, the um, 47 kilo mustard swivel, and we're going to do another uni knot. One, two, three, four. Again, a bit of lubrication. We don't want any mono burn ruining our knot there. 
and then cut off the excess. There we go. Again, we've got the FC Rock 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. Tie that onto our swivel with another uni knot. Anyone got any questions so far or any hypothesis about what what's going to happen with the tuna this season? I, um, it was actually a bit like clockwork here in the reports. So one, two, three, four. I heard reports of tuna up to 30 kilos going off at Sejuna. Then the next day, I heard tuna to 30 kilos going off out of Victor Harbour. And then the next day, I heard reports off of Portland. So it's like just they were travelling across the bite and you got reports one day from one location, then obviously they kept going, and you got reports the next day. And um, yeah, like I said, it was just like clockwork. It was, it was really cool to see the reports coming in, and the reports have just kept coming in. So it's looking to be a good season. Um, I know Shane and if those of you who know Shane and um, Ian off the forum, they were out today. So hopefully we hear how they went. They're on their kayakers and they got a fair idea what they're doing, especially Shane. And um, I know some kayakers who were out off Victor Harbour the other day and they saw tuna everywhere. They just couldn't tempt them. So it's it's looking good for this season. I'm really liking how it's shaping up. Last season was a bit of a pain. They didn't turn up too well last uh, season. I still managed to get one. But I didn't see a single bust up the whole season. Um, it was pretty disappointing. Anyway, there's another plastic rigged up. Another jig head rigged up for plastics. That one's ready to go. So I've got two plastic rods. It gives me the advantage of being able to run two different types of plastics. I've gone a little bit long on the leader here, actually. I may... See how I go, see how I like it. It is a short rod, but I may end up retying that a little bit shorter. But no, it's probably not too bad because it is such a short rod, it just makes the leader look really long. Alright, that one's done. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I finished saying what I was going to say, which is that the. Um, Having the two plastic rods, I like doing that because I can run two different types of plastics and see what they're preferring. Now this is this is not a pen SSM, so this is a terminator, um, a dog tooth terminator. I don't really know much more about them. They're sort of like a knockoff of the Stella, a poor man Stella. So they just had a bit of line wrapped lower down on the spool. I don't like that. And it can hold, it's probably, it's a really nice reel. But yeah, like I said, it's like a knockoff of the Stella. It's quite a cool reel. I like it, it holds a lot of line. This holds more than the SSMs. And this is matched up on, this rod is crazy. This is a G Loomis. I know, how does stingy bastard like me get a G Loomis? <laughs> Well, they're on special up at um, where my dad lives. He lives nowhere near the ocean, and so they can't move this stuff. And um, they were, like, it was ridiculous, like 80% off, and he, he couldn't resist. He, anything he sees for a bargain, he's got to get. And um, so he got, he got one for the whole family, <laughs> and um, this is the one he gave me. He said specifically, don't take it on the kayak. It's too expensive to lose. And um, I'll just put it this way, I've caught free tuna on it off a kayak, so <laughs> I don't think I really listened to him there, but um, it is a lovely rod, like it feels amazing catching tuna on this rod. And um, on this combo I'm going to run another one of these, these stick baits. So I'm not really running a whole lot of options, and that's because I'm pretty, like, I've been fishing for tuna for a while now, and I've got a fair idea what I think is going to work. And um, so I don't want to go wasting too much time running stuff that is new and might work. Um, so I've got another one of these stick baits I showed you earlier. The um, Yakamito Submino, 13 centimetre, 25 gram. Um, 
Because, yeah, I know that can work. I know the plastics can work. And if you can minimise the gear, um, minimise the amount you change the lures over, you're probably going to fish for longer, have more line in, like, have your lures in the water for longer, stuff you know works. And, um, yeah, why waste your time with stuff that could work if you know what can? So another new knot, one, two, three, four. Lubricate it up, pull it tight, and there we go. That's our fourth rod set up. So I like these minnows too because the kingies love them as well. So I'll run them in closer as well as out wide where the tuna are and um, in closer I might run two, two of them and out wide I might run this alongside a plastic and seeing how it's going, how I'm feeling, how I swap it around, I've got two of these rigged up so if one of them happens to get busted off or something um, or if I see a bust up um, and one's already out the back I can just grab the other one and cast it because um, they're great for casting. I've hooked it up on a tuna casting this and that's where I got absolutely dusted. It was a big tuna. <laughs> I lost all, almost all my line, the hooks pulled because I was just like jamming the spool against my fire, I had it full lock. Um, but I, I could see the metal on my spool and there had been about 300 metres of line on there. So um, this is definitely good to cast as well. So I've got quite a, quite an array of, um, of options that I know work there. Not, not heaps of different options, but heaps of stuff ready to go that I know can work. So we'll wind that up. And that's my rigging about done. Um, so if you've got any questions or anything you want to add to the discussion, fire away now. Um, otherwise, we're nearing the end of the live stream. I'll chuck this away. I'll just see if I've missed any comments. Yeah, so hopefully that's about all I've got for you, um, unless you've got any other questions now while I finish up, but um, that's, that's the, bring the end, we're going to sort of end the live stream there, hopefully you've enjoyed it, um, hopefully been a bit of nice information there, um, it's been cool to have you guys watching, and so this is the first live stream I've tried, um, if you've enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up so I know to do it again. Um, and make sure to check out some of my 360 videos. Um, check out my channel, like and subscribe, comment, all that stuff. It really helps my channel. And um, yeah, the 360, I just love it. I love making 360 videos. Um, I've got this D360 camera there. And it's just brilliant. Oh, another like, thank you for that. Just wondered if you have... Um, I missed the first few minutes as I was setting up rods as well. <laughs> That's all cool. Yeah, no, um, we all got to set up tuna. The tuna are here. So if we're all, you know, all setting up, go for it. What's more exciting than tuna on a kayak? Thank you, man. No worries, man. So hopefully, hopefully you guys all get out there and get some tuna this year. Um, I'm hoping to get some. Hopefully I can give you some free 60 videos of tuna. That would be awesome. I'm loving making free 60 videos. Um, and hopefully you're enjoying them. Make sure to check some of them out. Um, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. I'll, I'll be ending the live stream there. Unless anyone's got any last questions. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you next time.